friends, Cloud Bart here, just sitting down in the recording studio. And you might be thinking, what the heck is that place that you're sitting in, Bart? Well, it is a yurt, friends. And this is actually the loft. I'm up here off the ground, off the first floor, in the very ceiling of the yurt itself. There's actually a skylight dome above us here. So this is actually normally uh, open. And I can see all the way up into the trees and the canopy up here as well. I can usually hear the birds out here as well. <laughs> and so the yurt was really kind of an exciting project that my family and I got into many, many years ago as an opportunity to try to kind of test ourselves and see what we could build, what we could live in, um, how little we could do without really kind of just challenging ourselves. And I'll be digging into that topic a lot more in separate videos. So if you want to hear more about the yurt, let me know. <laughs> I'd love to rap about it. In particular though, one logistical problem of having the yurt here in the woods is that it goes through temperature and humidity fluctuations throughout the year. Now I do run a dehumidifier, but I don't keep it heated in here throughout the year. I try to keep the costs low uh, and just kind of keep it available for that. Plus I wanted it to be semi-primitive. Uh, in the winter, I have a wood stove that I can heat it up with. And I got to thinking, I would really love to know just how much the temperature changes down here and be able to actually go and check the temperature without having to go outside and be like, Mm, what's the temperature like? <laughs> and so what I did was I went out and I got myself a raspberry pie. And I don't need to sell you guys on how fun those things are. Um, so many wonderful projects that we can do with them out there. Uh, for me, I wanted to know the temperature and the humidity. So I got myself a raspberry pie. It lives right here in the yurt and it gathers humidity and temperature values for me. I think I've got it on a five minute interval currently right now. Now that was a good start. That got me gathering it on the pie itself. But then I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could go one step further and actually push that all the way up into AWS? And so just to kind of see what that looks like here. So if we have the yurt sitting here and we'll just kind of give it a little drawing like that. Boom, boom. <laughs> In the yurt, I have the Raspberry Pi sitting and you can kind of see it's attached to my Wi-Fi controller. And off of the Raspberry Pi, I have a DHT11, I think was the sensor um, that they're using. And like I mentioned, that does temperature, uh, both in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and it also does my humidity uh, testing as well. Now, on that, I have installed Boto3, which is the Python uh, system developers kit for AWS. So I have that running on my Pi and it allows me to use the AWS services. So in the background, I built a user in a group, got some permissions ready for my little Raspberry Pi user. Really all I needed was permissions to work with CloudWatch. And then from there, it pushes metrics up into the CloudWatch service on a regular interval. Now, these are what you would call a custom metric because it's pushing them uh, dynamically directly from the device itself rather than CloudWatch going and polling it. But the cool thing is that gives me the ability to push it whenever I want to. On the other side, then I also have my CloudWatch dashboard which receives all of this information and charts it out over time. So I get little uh, charting information, I get the current temp, the current humidity, and I'll show you all of this here in just a few moments. So pretty exciting stuff. I wanted to give you a quick look at how I kind of built some of those pieces so that maybe you can try this project out yourself as well. Uh, keep in mind, I don't have a ton of cost in this. I bought the Raspberry Pi, but beyond that, uh, almost everything that I'm using to monitor within CloudWatch fits into the free tier. So I'm not paying much for the actual uh, monitoring and the persistence of that data in the background. All right, so let's take a look at it first. We'll jump on the Raspberry Pi and I can kind of show you how uh, I got that configured and take a quick look at the Python scripts that are driving that. Cool, so over here on my Raspberry Pi command line, you can see I'm sitting here in my Raspberry Pi home directory. Um, and if you've used Raspberry Pi, this is a pretty standard Raspbian load that I have on here right now. And uh, I started out by first grabbing the ADA Fruit Python DHT libraries. Um, and if you take a look inside of that, that is essentially the working directory that I need. Yeah, this is the working folder for all of the uh, actual interface that talks to the DHT temperature sensor itself. So I use this first to figure out how to grab the temperature and humidity values. And then I went back up and kind of duplicated that logic over into my own little project. And let me make some more room here. Okay, so I've got my little yurt temp project here. So if we jump into that directory, see what we got. Cool. So I basically have my little Python script publish metric.py. And then I have a yurt conditions log file. And really, if you look at the date right now, you can see it is 1240. And that file was updated uh, at 1240. So it currently contains whatever the most recent reading is. So uh, a moment ago, it read that it was 16 degrees Celsius, 60.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the humidity 
was at 52%. So useful information, those are the metrics that I'm sending over to CloudWatch on a regular basis. I just log them here locally just to make sure that I can kind of see that it's still working uh, and it's functioning properly. Um, if you take a look at cron tab, I have this configured in there as a little job. So here um, it runs, oh, look, it's running every second. Oh no, it's running every minute. So Python's out here. Uh, there you can see it's just calling out that publish metric.py script. Cool, so that gets it regularly running this. Let's clear this out. And then the final thing to kind of take a look at is the actual publish metric uh, Python script itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump that out and we'll start up here at the top. It's pretty simple. I import the Bodo3 Python system developers kit and the ADA fruit um, DHT sensor libraries that I need. I set up a sensor object. I set up a pin value here. Okay, and then we create the actual check. So I can do humidity and I can retrieve temperature by calling this little uh, ADA fruit dot uh, read retry and then passing in the sensor type and the pin number. Now friends, this is where things with the Raspberry Pi get a little more specific. I had to know which pin was correctly set up for the temperature sensor that I was using. The original instructions weren't exactly completely on par. So I just did a couple of Googles for DHT11 and kind of found out how to figure out which pin I was actually pulling that off of. Only one of the pins is the correct data value. This is kind of classic Raspberry Pi stuff. You'd want to make sure you understand your pinouts. In my case, four was the correct one. And then I also made a little helper here. So the temperature Fahrenheit, um, I'm actually doing a conversion here where I'm converting the sense, uh, the Celsius reading that it provides into a Fahrenheit reading. So that's really all of the little variable parts that get set up at the beginning. Here is the main one. So this one goes through and it runs um, my little uh, temperature and my humidity reading values by using the little uh, read retry and getting the values from it. And then it goes through and the rest of the script is the part where we publish it out to CloudWatch. So here I'm creating my little CloudWatch instance and my little object. And then I'm gonna use it to run the put metric data command three different times. The first one drops off the temperature Celsius and it's grabbing that value that I grabbed earlier. I'm grouping everything under one common namespace so that I can graph it all together. And then farther on down, I repeat that process. This time for Fahrenheit, same namespace. And then finally grabbing the humidity value and again, putting it in the same namespace. So that got me all set up. I've got cron running out there, running this little Python script on a regular interval. And I'm shipping all those metrics over to CloudWatch using a user and permissions that I built in the background. So now that we saw what Raspberry is doing here locally, uh, let's jump over to identity and access management and then we'll get into CloudWatch. Just kind of wanted to touch all the bases there. Over here in the identity and access management dashboard, I created a group for the user that I'm using on my Raspberry Pi, and I gave it just this CloudWatch agent admin policy. This is a particularly useful policy that's designed for the CloudWatch agent itself, and it really just has some basic permissions for logging. It allows me to publish metrics. I can put metric data, log events, describe log streams, and create log groups and streams as well. After that, I built myself a Raspberry Pi user and added them to that Raspberry Pi group that I had built. So this sets up the permissions that I needed. Uh, it also follows that group policy permissions uh, best practice within AWS. And now I'm ready to finally actually take a look at the CloudWatch dashboard that I built using all that fun metric data. And so if we take a look over here in the CloudWatch dashboard, I'm gonna jump down here to metrics. And you can see that I actually have my own namespace that's available here called yurt conditions. And if I jump inside that, you can see the three different metrics that I was able to retrieve. There's humidity, temperature Celsius, and temperature Fahrenheit. All of these were created using that Python script that's running out there on my Raspberry Pi. Now, I've gone a lot farther and I've taken that metric data and published it in its own little dashboard. Yeah, here we go, dashboard uh, yurt conditions. Very cool, let's open that up. Excellent. And so what you can see here now is by using the dashboard, I was able to pull out different pieces of information based on those metrics. Currently right now we're looking over the last 12 hours, but if I went back over the last week, it gets a little more interesting. And on top of that, what I have is all the conditions over time. The red line is your Fahrenheit. The blue line is the humidity. And then down here at the bottom, I guess that's a peach colored line. <laughs> that's the Celsius rating that's on there. So pretty cool stuff. I get this nice visual look at it. And you can see that over the last week, I've had some pretty big temperature spikes. Uh, this day it was up around 
up in the 60s and it got down at night down into the 40s. And then we had a couple of days of warmer weather in the evenings. It was in the 50s. Okay, and sorry for my uh, uh, non-standard output friends there. This is, I'm talking Fahrenheit right now. Cool. And then the humidity is particularly interesting. Uh, I tend to keep a lot of musical instruments and I keep uh, my computers down here once in a while, depending on what I'm working on. So keeping that humidity down below the mold and dew point levels, really important for me. That's why I run the humidifier down here. And so on my chart, you can see that it runs pretty consistently uh, around 50% humidity. It fluctuates a little bit. Often that's because the dehumidifier <laughs> needs to be emptied and it has a uh, run over a little bit. The other cool thing is that I've set up some little um, widgets on the sides of my main graph. Everything on the left is current condition. So right now I'm sitting here, it's it's just about 60 degrees in the yurt, 15 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees, uh, 52 degrees humidity. Feels pretty good, friends. I'm doing okay. I got my hat on. I can wear my long sleeve shirt here as well. And the yurt's not uh, warm from all the mouth breathing <laughs> and from the computers running in here as well. I got my lights running too. So 60 degrees right about right now. If you look on the right, these are the maximums that we ran into over this time period. And so I could adjust that down to maybe like the last three days. That would be pretty good. Yeah, there we go. OK, that looks pretty good. Over on the right, these are some of the little statistics about some of the highs and lows that we saw within this time period. And actually looking at it now, it seems like the math might be slightly off on it. So something for me to kind of work on later on. In the end, friends, what this does is it gives me the ability to now go and anytime I want to know what the temperature is down at the yurt, I can go log in and take a look at this. I also, if you have the AWS management app, uh, I can have this plugged in on my app. It's pretty easy to kind of go check the temperature as well. So a lot of different cool things that I could spin off of this logic. Now I have events coming from the yurt on a regular interval. And if I wanted to trigger alarms, like when the humidity gets too high, letting me know I need to come empty um, the dehumidifier bucket, <laughs> then I can set that up and have it send me emails for it along the way. Currently, the only email alarm that I have set up is when this thing goes offline. So if I stop getting sensor readings from any of these particular sensors at some point in time, it'll send me a notice that says, hey, uh, your temperature readings are offline. And usually that means I need to come down here and maybe restart the wireless router or restart the Raspberry Pi itself. So in the end, kind of fun ways for me to use the Raspberry Pi to help with my work conditions so I know what's going on down here in the yurt on a regular basis. It's helped me out immeasurably and it gives me some really fun information that I can work with and build event-based logic off later on down the road. So I hope this helps you out down the road. Keep in touch, remember to subscribe and like. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter out there at CloudBart and here on YouTube as well. Really appreciate it, friends. We'll see you in the cloud.